So we are heading back into South Cottonwood drainage today. Uh, Memorial Day weekend here. It's man, it's super busy down at Cottonwood Lake. The lake's totally open, obviously. Trees are green leaves are starting to sprout out in and around the area. Um, lots of people out on paddle boards. Lots of people fishing. I'm sure there'll be a ton of people up here camping. Uh, we were here several weeks ago, right at the Tarmigan Lake Mineral Basin intersection there. So we're gonna go back up here, check all three trails, see how far we can get, see what the snow levels look like. Looks like there's been a couple of people kind of turned around in this spot. So uh, yeah, we'll lock the hubs in, uh, see how far we can go. So we're on the Tarmigan Lakeside now. Uh, this is usually where it really starts stacking up, getting deep right here at the creek crossing. It's running pretty good. There's been, I don't know, a little bit of snow uh, from the start of the trail and Tarmigan side up to here. But the creek crossing is where it gets deep. Right at about 11.2 right now. Um, tore open a gash back tire, that guy. So, you know, if you're not gonna run spare, which like I don't, you better have some plugs, um, a way to air things back up. So toss three, four, five plugs in there. Uh, we'll switch lead vehicles and uh, see if we can press on. So we made it just shy of 11.3 on Ptarmigan Lake. Had to winch up this last hill after we cut a small slit in the back sidewall of uh, one of my tires. So we winched up that hill to find a spot to turn around. Uh, we'll head back down, we'll go up the main fork, then continue on 344, see where we're at. So there's that hill we just winched up. And then uh, Cheston was able to crawl up around the corner. You're talking three foot uh, drift right through there. So still really deep snow, um, just over 11. We'll go check these other two routes uh, today and see, see how they look too. So we came off of Tarmigan, came down 349 there, back on to 344. Um, we're close to 11.3 right here. There's easily two feet of snow on the ground that we've been pushing through. A decent sized tree in the road right here. It takes a couple minutes to cut this one out and uh, see if we can keep heading up. Yeah, so 344, we're at 10.5 elevation right now. Um, snowing on us earlier, it's pretty 
It's a nice day. It's sunny, kind of calm right now. So yeah, about 10.5 with deep, deep snow. I mean, you saw the first part of the this trail video. We ended up hitting snow at 10.8. So it's been 700 feet of climb from the first contact with snow across the road. That's pretty typical for everywhere. You're going to be able to see snow impacting roads somewhere around 10.8. And then if you're able to push up to 11,000 feet or above, and then the snow's gonna get really deep, really quick. We are headed up Half Moon uh, on this part of the trail report. So we're still here on Memorial Day weekend. Uh, a lot slower than other places. Uh, granted, it's the tail end of the weekend, but there's, there's lots of open camping spots and uh, um, open areas, trailheads are not too busy, um, so yeah, it should be a good day. We're going to go check out water levels, snow levels, and uh, see what we can get. So the Half Moon Creek crossing is not too bad. I'll show you the tape measure here in a second. Um, looking at the flow reports right now, they're still continuing to climb. Um, gets about 100 CFS on the high. Right now around 80 on the low. Uh, we're not to peak water yet, so those numbers will go up a little bit. Um, peak water is 1 a.m. And then the low is around 1.15 in the afternoon. Uh, and that's usually because all of the water as it's the snow is melting, up in the drainage by the time it all melts from you know during the day when the sun's intensity is the highest to when it gets down to the stream and into the gauges then it'll be usually typically in the middle of the night a lot of these creeks in the arkansas river basin are between midnight and 1 a.m uh, where they will peak so if you're running it during the middle of the day that's actually the best time because that's usually when the water is going to be lower <laughs> your guess is 28 I'm going 29, so this would be Price is Right <laughs> rules, right? So on that Toyota, we were not quite to the top of the beadlock, so it's really less than 26, it's about 25 inches. It's where that creek is right now. So on a 43 inch tire, that's that's not that deep. So not too bad. Uh, we'll keep heading up, see where the snow line is. You know, so uh, mid to high 20s depth of that creek right now um, totally passable for a lot of vehicles I mean stock Rubicon uh, Jeep JL you know you can see it's between 31 and 33 ish inches uh, for the Rubicon package depending on whether it's the XR with the 35s or the standard Rubicon with the 33s uh, and XR you can get on other stuff now too not just a Rubicon so yeah you know it might get deeper in the next 10-ish days, peak runoff in the Arkansas River Valley is usually between the first and second week of June, so we're coming up on that quick. Um, but yeah, creek's looking good, and uh, let's see where the first sign of snow impact in the road, what elevation that is. So we're right about 11.5 now. Um, pretty, pretty deep snow impacting the road here. Looks like some people have kind of gone around the snow on to the uphill side to get out of it on the grass so just always remember try and stay on the road no matter what um, don't widen the trail or go around snow drifts when you get early into the season like this um, there's a bit of snow down low at about 11,000 not low lower at 11,000 on the north side as you pop up into the end of the valley here um, we tracked it up pretty good somebody's been through it before so um, probably in a day or two it'll easily be be clear We'll try and track this section up on the road, make sure it melts out pretty quick um, so that it'll be open on the road for full-size vehicles here.
that. So this is Forest Service Road 110, uh, 110J splits off down there, Iron Mike Mine. We'll go check that next. But uh, these are two of the core adopted trails, uh, 110, 110J. So Champion Mill, Iron Mike Mine. Um, the, this upper section over here that you can go on the mill, past the mill, that was added back as a full-size motorized trail on that last travel decision that we've been posting a lot of information about. And then Iron Mike was closed um, temporarily, they say. It was about six years just after that second creek crossing after the obstacle up there. Um, that was added back as a full-size motorized trail too, um, all the way up to the end of that. Um, so that's, we feel good about those two pieces of the travel management process and for our involvement, what we were being able to do and working with the Forest Service, trail adoptions, trail work, stewardship projects uh, to get two sections of road that were ultimately closed, converted to a full-size motorized trail and then reopened to the public. So this is how far we got just on the other side of the, the road from the mill there. Um, still easily three foot deep drift here and this is why I was talking about tracking the snow up to you know kind of open trails because here's one of the tracks and this is about two minutes ago where we were and you can see already the snow melt that then is going down the track into the creek so it doesn't take long once you track something up for the snow melt to melt off then we've got you know we can be able to still run on the trails not have people drive around snow uh, and you know, how, have things melt out quicker. All right, so we'll update a couple more trails uh, while we fly the drone up around and check out the mill, the snow levels in the upper part of the basin up here. Um, but kudos to some guys that put a report on trails off road two days ago. Hayden Pass is open, fully passable. Uh, they dug out the last big snow drift, so that one is good to go. Um, it looks like Marshall Pass. The gates open on the Gunnison side yesterday. Um, the Salida side has a gate and it's really weird. It, it's not a dated one and I really don't know what they're doing with it, but hopefully that one opened as well since the Gunnison one opened. Uh, one of our board members involved in water services all in, up and down the Ark Valley. So a lot of our water reports, snow reports, stuff like that come from the official gauges and data. Uh, he was on Marshall Pass on the 27th. And um, not through the main cut, but lower, it was passable and it will be passable within a few days of that gate opening. So we're really close over there. Uh, another core, core board member went over Cottonwood Pass now since that is open. Uh, was on the Tin Cup side. Here's some photos. Got up to Mirror Lake. It's still frozen. Uh, deep, deep snow along the lake and then all up into that basin. Uh, we've got a grant that we got last year that's going on over on Italian Creek. Some road work. Um, so there's property owners over there. We're scoping things out, early season conditions. This is what it looks like at 10-6. So really deep snow on the Gunnison side over there at 10-6. Uh, Corey from the Pitkin store had uh, some pictures. The, the Cumberland Gate was open on that side. Um, Sean went up the Tin Cup side of Cumberland, got several miles up to about 11-2 before the snow really got deep on that side as well. Uh, what else have I seen? So there was a report on bush ducks, um, the Leadville side of uh, Mosquito, you, deep, deep snow at 11.4. That's really what we're seeing all the way up and down the valley is 11.4. Um, that's the Leadville side. So the Alma side is really the one that keeps people out of the crossing that um, for the deep snow fields up on that side. Um, let's see, I saw Spring Creek, the full loop Spring Creek and down Cascade Creek was open now. Uh, there were some snow drifts on Cascade. Those have been busted through. It is not open to the connector to the top of Saxon though yet. <clears throat> As our report, Billmore was open to just past the Red Elephant Junction. Then it got really deep with snow there. Uh, over here where we're at, Independence Pass is fully open now uh, for the season as well. So we've got that. Uh, Weston Pass, somebody made it to the top of Weston from the Fair Play side. Leadville side still was snowed in. I actually saw somebody stuck up there, so that pass is not fully passable yet. A little bit of an abbey field on the very edge of that 
big shoot. See if we can cut a track and keep going. After that Abbey Field, uh, north side of the road down there, there's a couple little patches of snow, but nothing too bad. Now we're up at that second creek crossing. This creek's running pretty deep for this side, and then there's that obstacle across the creek. We did some work here last year. There's a winch anchor over there if you need it. Uh, we'll see how it goes. We end up cutting about seven trees, seven trees out of the road here uh, on Iron Mike, and that dark timber, pretty thick up through here. We'll see, see if there's any more, how far we can get. All right, this is about it. We're about 11.5 on the Iron Mike side. You can see way up there in the basin, it's still really deep, just like on the other side over there by Mount Champion. Snowpack's still looking pretty good, so we're gonna have to call it right here and turn around. Um, but you can get a long ways up. All the trees are gone. Deep tracks now through the snow. Uh, keep people on the road. It's important, be sure to stay on the road. Uh, yeah, and you can get up to 11.5. So that's the end of the trails report for this week. Uh, lots of stuff open, uh, lots of new places where you can get even farther and to push into these areas and uh, give you guys updates uh, so yeah keep watching uh, subscribe to our channel and keep watching for future videos